Second. Good. All in favor? Aye. Approved. Any old business? I suppose that the item that was tabled at the last meeting should come before the board. Selection of officer, officer for 2015. And we're doing that at new business. Sir? That's our, that's our owner of new business selection of officers. Oh. Since it was tabled, I thought it might be okay. So anyway, we're going to do the election of officers, and I'm going to nominate John Hall for chair. Mr. Sullivan? I'll uh, nominate Ed Sullivan for uh, chair. Vice chair. Vice chair, I'm sorry. Nominate Jake Blake for secretary. Okay. All in favor of John Hall? Aye. 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 All in favor of Mr. Sullivan? Aye. 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 And all in favor of Mr. Blake? Aye. 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 We have a new election, and uh, Mr. Hall's the chairman. We're going to pass it to him. All right. On to new business. Um, City Manager Hall. You have a presentation for us? Uh, I'm lying a little bit. Uh, got an approval of this. Start at the top, that up one. Oh. What are we all doing? Any. Agenda? Right, we didn't get to. Yeah. Approval of agenda, I'm sorry. Approval of agenda. Motion. We, we, we did that. Motion. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. Agenda's approved. To the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and Industrial Board. Uh, last year at the January meeting, we had Mr. Bibb with uh, MLTIDA. Get that right. Okay. And had a great presentation at the time. Uh, that sort of has been in, in my forethought. And when Frank Humber come on, uh, we started promoting Fairview to a further extent than we had in the past. Our budget doesn't help us to the point where we can hire a promotional firm to help Fairview. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Jeremiah Pyram stayed in touch with me, which I'm very thankful of. Uh, Matt, that, uh, he kept reminding me of the meetings and everything. So uh, um, TVA contacted us as long with uh, Jeremiah at the time to come to a meeting at the uh, Williamson Chamber. And that was very informative that day. And uh, it sort of got, got us to roll in, in the right direction. Then we had a forum that we brought in TVA and, and the Williamson Chamber and the Fairview Chamber uh, at the time. And so basically, when Mayor Carroll came along, we all sort of started pitching in together and, and uh, to move forward with the, uh, not only rooftops development, but commercial, industrial, retail. And I think it's been beneficial to have these contacts. Uh, actually, uh, uh, John Cherry, our uh, uh, president of our chamber, his daughter contacted, was it Dawn Olson or would she contact her? It's whichever way it was to start this ball to roll in here tonight. Then the mayor contacted the state. So, uh, what I'd like to do tonight is uh, uh, kind of give the mayor a chance to speak and let her tell you where we're at, and then I think she'll turn the meeting over to Mr. Roeder. Thank you. Um, the main idea is to bring everybody together tonight. There's no huge agenda, but um, one of the things that we found um, in the process that we didn't have a few properties identified and we were missing out on opportunities. And so this great group of people 
have through the years tried to help us in different ways in different times, but we never seem to move past the discussion phase. So what our hope is tonight is that we brought some property owners that have suggested that they might be interested in having their um, um, land viewed. And so we brought them together. We're going to talk about, let them share with us what we need to do. Um, example is the state was looking, um, they had somebody coming in looking for 200 acres for a manufacturer. It was would have been a great, you know, opportunity. Offered 200 jobs, and then um, at first, and then an additional 200. So we realized in that process that we just weren't ready, even though we put in our, our good efforts. That we needed their um, expert opinions to help us, where we don't miss those opportunities, and um, we're ready. And we know property you know, sell and things will change. But if we can always keep at least three properties that are identified and we've done everything we needed to to make sure um, that they're ready, then we won't miss those opportunities anymore. So I will go ahead and pass it on to you, Mr. Wolfgang. I'm Wolfgang Roda. I'm with the Tennessee State Department of Economic and Community Development covering a couple of counties around Davidson, Williamson County and Fairview being one of the cities in my territory. Uh, just to give you an idea, we get about two to three serious requests for site searches or building searches through our system every month. Uh, we usually send it out to our local economic development partners. And for the last two years since I've been working with the state, I have never seen a response from Fairview. Uh, while when you look at Fairview, companies that want to locate in Middle Tennessee, want to locate in Nashville, they don't necessarily mean Nashville proper, but they look in a 25-mile radius. So Fairview, with its great location on 840 and 40, is a great possible uh, location for, for companies to relocate. Uh, two things we need, and that's why, I brought, that's why we brought uh, Matt Largen and Amanda Murray from the Williamson Chamber of Commerce. We need some marketing material. Uh, we need to get onto site selectors, desks, and radar with an image of a city and with enough site information, with enough community information. One little side issue, the response time we give our economic development partners to respond to a request for information is usually less than a week. We're lucky if we get two days. Uh, site selectors happen or want things, want things to happen very fast. So the Chamber, uh, Williamson Inc., has been very supportive of Fairview and will, uh, will stay supportive to help you with the marketing side approach. The other thing we see with site selectors, uh, have seen over the last few years, is they don't want to look at a wooded site that has hills and mountains and streams on it. They want to look at a site that they can start to develop, uh, take the old term shovel ready. Uh, and I'm glad we brought Kendrick Curtis, who used to be a colleague of mine at Economic Development, is now with MTIDA. Uh, supports us wholeheartedly. Uh, he was instrumental in uh, developing a program that's called Select Tennessee, which is basically a site certification program. And Leanne Cox is currently running this program. So I'll stay out of it and let Matt and Amanda, Leanne and Kendrick talk. Sure. Thanks, Will Kevin. I'll start. My name is Matt Larchin. I'm the president and CEO of Williamson, Inc. That's the combined Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development Organization for Williamson County. And I want to thank you all for giving us the time to talk to you tonight. Um, I echo what the mayor and Wolfgang said. Um, <clears throat> Fairview is, is really important to what we do. Our organization covers the entire county. I love it when we have opportunities to work outside of the I-65 corridor. I think that's really important. We've spent a lot of time with uh, Scott Fetzer Company over the last few months getting to know some existing companies here in Fairview and, and Williamson County. And the way I view our office and our staff is really a resource for you all, that you all are the ones that make the decision on how you want this economy to go, and we're the ones that can help get you there. And Wolfgang's right. We've got plenty of contacts. We have plenty of marketing materials. We can certainly get the word out about Fairview being a great place to locate and relocate an operation. What we need help for, and that's why we're all here tonight, is what are the sites that are going to be ready when that company comes to call? Because just like Wolfgang said, when a company contacts us much later in the process than they ever had before, because everything else is online now, they want to be here yesterday. 
So having these sites ready to go, having the infrastructure ready to go on the site, I think is really going to put Fairview ahead of the game. So again, thank you uh, for letting us take the time to come and talk to you tonight. And this is really just a continuation of the relationship we hope goes uh, years in the future. Want to add anything, Amanda? Um, you know, the only thing I'll add is that, you know, it's been great so far working with um, Mr. Hall, Mr. Hummer, and, and the new mayor. Uh, you know, we've been having this conversation for a while, so I think it's exciting for us to, you know, really sit down and identify some sites that are ideal um, for companies to move into and create some jobs here in Fairview. Um, and, you know, we're just excited to get a product out there that we can then submit to the state and hopefully create some jobs out in Fairview. So. Do you, want to... Do you want to say something about the, the program that we suggest for you to look at <clears throat> uh, and make a decision if you want to continue with the services the state offers? Okay. Um, well, thank you for the invitation, and I'm glad to be here. Look forward to working with you. Uh, Wolfgang mentioned that I previously was with the state ECD office. I was with them for 10 years. Uh, about four weeks ago, I joined MTIDA, and so we're in a bit of a role transition here tonight. I, uh, I think the call came to Dawn at our office for a presentation. I wasn't entirely sure what might be most helpful. Um, I did put together a few slides that Leanne and I might share if that would be appropriate, if that is something you'd like to, to sort of look at. It, it has two purposes. One purpose is sort of to give you uh, some information that I've just picked up going to, in, you know, uh, economic development conferences and uh, wanted you to see that and also sort of help you have some context for how the uh, the certification program can help you. I think there's a, there are a few pieces in there that would benefit you if, if we want to take time to, to do that. I don't... Okay. And this way you can do that and not me. <laughs> this or <laughs> presented together before and she's not even seen these slides so uh, your patience is appreciated and I in full disclosure stole this slide um, this is a slide that a national site selection consultant used uh, three weeks ago at a at a American Public Power Association site consultant forum and this summed up something that I had been hearing I went to the site selectors guild conference that was held in February, and the common theme there is the same common theme that I see on this slide, and that's why I wanted you to see this. Uh, in the landscape, the topic was the landscape of industrial site selection, and the two main things are the top two things on this slide. To locate companies and be successful, quality real estate is paramount, and also available labor to work in those factories. Um, utilities are critical. That's part of the real estate piece and incentives are also important and that's why Wolfgang is here. Um, you may or may not have seen this slide. Those of us in this industry see a version of this slide. This is a slide that Austin Consulting out of Ohio who is the lead contractor on this project with the state used um, and it is the illustration to communicate that site selection is really not named properly. It should be site elimination. Their job, they get paid at the end of the day to recommend to their corporate client the single or possibly two sites that meet and maximize that company's objective. So they're not interested in finding a lot of good sites or a lot of okay sites. They're interested in as quickly as possible to find the single best sites that will meet that company's objective. So you must bear this in mind as you think about how you stack up and how you compete against people in the next county and the people in the next state and people in another part of the country. And this slide is a little busy and it also is an Austin slide but you'll see this variation many, many times. And the point I want to make here is the work that uh, Amanda and Matt and Wolfgang do to work with these companies and to create an environment where they can succeed is so very complicated and so multifaceted. You will have aspects related to incentives, tax negotiation, workforce, you know, financing, the livability of the community, 
And all those things are important. And the thing we're here to talk about tonight really is the real estate and utility piece of it. And at the end of the day, if you don't have, it doesn't matter if you line up a perfect 10 on all these other aspects for that company. If you don't have a piece of ground that they can put in a shovel in and put a building up on, it doesn't matter. Um, and so I can't say it's the most important thing, but I can say it's an essential thing. And so bear that in mind as you think about this. There are so many different pieces here. Only one of them is what we're talking about. You can have the most perfect site. It be certified, it be not certified, it be really ready to go. And you might still not see a company for a number of years just because your other factors didn't line up. So it is a complicated puzzle. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to touch on this, you know, what is really needed in order to compete, you must be compared, prepared and ready. You know, successful communities, they know who their target industry is. They've got sites that fit that industry. Are they an office kind of operation? Are they a distribution kind of operation? Do you have a site that has the transportation or the utility or access that would fit that kind of industry? You know, they know who they're after. They're not just going to get a 40 acre site ready and hope the right company matches up. You know, appropriate utility infrastructure. If you're trying to locate a food processing operation, your water and wastewater plant need to have a lot of capacity. Um, labor force that's ready to work, you know, those are, these are the pieces of a successful community. Uh, ready sites and buildings, that's just one, one part of this. But it's, I mentioned an essential part. You know, in a, in a community that's, su that's supportive and welcoming the industry as well as a collaborative economic development team, which is, I think, what you see here on, at this table today. You know, you've got representation from uh, the state, from the local chamber, from the county chamber. I didn't mention, uh, but should, MTIDA is a regional organization funded by the electric power distributors. So we operate in 38 counties in Middle Tennessee. So ready to go sites and buildings. You know, you, you need to think about what's right for you that can happen in a mix of settings. You know, it depends on what kind of industry you're after, but 10 to 100 acres, various size buildings, utilities, you know, free of contamination. I was with a prospect this past week and you, you know, they were just trying to find the right spot. It didn't have the issues and they were eliminating the one that did. And so that's kind of, you know, you need proper zoning. You need soils and drainage that work. You need you know, reasonably good transportation access. Uh, and often in Wolfgang and, and Matt, you know, and if TVA was here, you know, all of us would tell you, I think, very much the same thing. Many projects start out looking for a building. Well, why is that? Well, that's because they really need to be up and running as quickly as possible, unless they have some special operation that they really have to build a unique building for. Um, and there's really a low inventory of quality buildings. You know, some things, available buildings, sort of some challenges to finding a good building. You know, often they're in a poor condition. They're designed for, a, you know, the past type industries. They're from the 1970s. They don't have the, the, build, the, the, the ceiling heights that you need or the dock doors. You know, maybe it's just landlocked and there's no room for expansion. Um, or it you know, cost a lot to, to upgrade. So I say this to say that buildings are often what a company thinks they want to find, but often can't find. And so the very next thing you have to go with that, you know, the best alternative to a building that fits a company's needs is a site that they can get up and running in as quickly as possible. Um, that's a you know, ready to go site. So what's that look like? Well, this is a site in Dyersburg that's as ready to go as it could be. It got, it was so ready to go, they dot foods put a distribution center on there faster than we could certify it. Um, it was cleared of major vegetation. It was served with utilities. It had sufficient qualities. You know, I'm not talking about a four inch water line. Uh, transportation access was excellent. It had good soils and drainage. It had the proper zoning. It had compatible neighboring land uses. It was in an industrial park. You're not dealing with it being surrounded by a school or residential subdivision or you know, something that would not be a good fit. Uh, free of contamination, environmental documentation. You know, it's one thing to be free of contamination. It's another thing to be able to prove to somebody you're free of contamination. Um, you know, and willing sellers. We've had sites that we thought were on the market. 
got to the negotiating table and all of a sudden they were a lot more expensive. Um, and so I say all those things to say that's sort of the goal and don't confuse that with a certification. A certification is really a program designed to help a community guide a community through the process of preparing an industrial site. It's intended to help a community examine that site and to document that situation. That documentation, that stamp, you know, that's sort of what that purpose is about. And so I just kind of put this slide up just to sort of help you understand. Um, four years ago, uh, when ECD was kind of in a little bit of a transition, they asked me to look at and develop this program to assist communities throughout the state be ready with industrial property. So that's site certification. That's the Select Tennessee Certified Site Program. And it's been up and running for four years. And Leanne, will, I'll show you a few slides to sort of get you acquainted with its status. A very new, brand new, crispy new, still in the pilot stage program is the property evaluation piece. And that's intended uh, to help counties. It's countywide, it's not community based, but it's countywide. That's why Matt's office needs to be at the table because that's the group to help you through this process. It's intended to help a whole county evaluate the property that's their next future industrial sites. What's viable sites for in investment? Similar to what TVA does, really is a complement to what TVA does because this uses an independent outside industrial site selection firm. This program is in the pilot stage. We have six going through six counties going through it right now this might be something in the fall or next spring to think about and we're currently looking at taking applications for this one probably in august so select tennessee this was a new statewide site certification program it built on a legacy that mtida had with West Tennessee to build the deal ready program, but we really at ECD took it to the next level. We were several years later, we learned from MTIDA's experience and we improved upon it. But it sets a consistent and rig rigorous standard. To this point, 34 sites have been certified in the state. Four have been chosen for manufacturing operations and two for distribution centers. You know, and I think you'll, this sort of has come out in this presentation, hopefully, but, you know, to a prospect, the importance of having a ready site, one is to eliminate or minimize risk and uncertainty. That risk is in cost, and that cost is in time or un unexpected delays, environmental challenges. Those kinds of things are things that companies just simply can't deal with and put up with. So that's the, the benefit to a prospect of having a quality site. And it helps you as a community preemptively identify issues. And it demonstrates that you've done that by taking it through this due diligence process. It shortens that development timeline because the company's not having to wait on a geotechnical firm to get out there and do soil borings. And it equips you with the information that you need to be able to provide that company with the information that they need to, to choose you. And it increases knowledge that you don't have right now about your community, about the site. Uh, you don't know what you don't know. And this program is not going to tell you and teach you everything there is, but it is a rigorous and regimented sequential process by which we will try to discover and learn as many things as possible. So this is sort of the State of the Union. This is, this is where we have worked with communities. We, when this map uh, was made, we certified 34 sites in the state, east to west, not as many in Middle Tennessee. Um, the black dots show sites that submitted a letter of intent. They raised their hand and said, we're interested in the program. The circles show sites that have been certified. And the little flag callouts show locations where sites that were certified where companies have located. I mentioned Dot Foods out in Dyersburg. It's a distribution center. It took 50 acres of a 100-acre site. Second Harvest is putting a distribution center in Benton County. This was intended to be a rural program, and <coughs> no more rural than Benton County and Camden. I mean, this distribution center is going to be a tremendous help for them. Hancock Tire up in Clarksville went on a certified site. Beretta and American Colors in the Gallatin Industrial Park. <coughs> SL Tennessee is an automotive manufacturer in Clinton. And 
One of these is not marked on here, Leanne, is Overton County has sold their industrial site for this, so we need to get that, that changed. But you also notice on this map that not all those black dots are little circles with C's in them because we took the hard approach that uh, we weren't going to be a marketing program. The program would have no validity and have no value to the community or the state if it was nothing more than a marketing program. And so it's a site preparedness program that happens to have an end marketing benefit. And that means that we had to tell a number of communities this is a challenge and this issue uh, would not allow that site to be certified. And those are not fun conversations to have, but the facts are the facts. And if we didn't tell them, a company would tell them, and that would ruin the reputation and the investment the state had made in the program and the communities had made in the program. And so I think everybody understands that. So if a community <coughs> doesn't have the wastewater capacity that it takes to locate an operation, then we really don't want that site to be on that level. But that community needs to know that wastewater limitation exists. And often they don't. I mean, often your utility guys know it, but your civic leadership might not really understand the implications for that. And so this program, that's an example of why several sites weren't able to be certified. Uh, this happens in a couple of ways. And the best ways, in my opinion, are programs where they hire an independent site selection professional, an independent firm who does this work because there's no national standard for what it means to have a certified site. There's no, you know, in the economic development profession, there's no certified economic development group to stamp you and say you've reached that level. And so what <coughs> happens is, in the best programs, this industrial site selection consultant serves as really that outside independent auditor and says this is an industry standard. And so uh, a number of these programs have hired at these firms and that's the approach we took I mentioned Austin. Austin's the firm in Ohio who competed on the RFP, won the bid, and has done the work to this point. And uh, they do a lot of work all across the nation, have a very high quality team of consultants, and they're able to speak truth to communities and say this is the issue in ways that sometimes we really can't. Um, and so that, that's sort of context for the program. And, and I mentioned it's a process, and I always took that approach. It's not an examination. It's not send us your materials, and if you meet muster, we'll send you a certificate in the mail. It's a process, and it's a sequential step-through process. You send a letter of intent. That gets you on the state's radar that you're interested, knowledgeable, and considering the program. You prepare a step one application that really can be prepared without any kind of real expense, just effort and time. Um, and then you prepare, then you have a site visit if everything checks out. The community is visited by one of these consultants. They spend a full day here. I always say that's a day of discovery and documentation and exploration. That's the value in the program is in that day in a lot of ways. Following that, if you're approved, and not everybody was approved after the site visit, you go to the step two application, and then you work on that, and that's the largest and most complicated. That's the point at which soil borings are done, phase one are done, wetland determinations are done, hydrologic determinations are done, utility engineering work is done if it's necessary, and then at the end, if everything checks out, uh, that's when the certification is awarded. And in my experience, uh, communities whether or not they actually were able to finish that or not, they received some benefit because they knew things they didn't know before. They had material they didn't have before. They knew things they needed to work on and address before. Um, and I think this is just a screenshot to show you the different topics that are addressed, you know, property information. We've had industrial sites in the state that they didn't know they didn't own the mineral rights on the property. We had one industrial site they came to find out was transferred to the IDB during a divorce. So there was question as to whether or not the IDB actually had legal title to the property. You know, things that you just wouldn't assume, we would assume were checked out, weren't always checked out. So, you know, lots of factors here, lots of utility information, um, lots of transportation information. It's, it's, it's just a comprehensive program. And that's all the slides I have. And I didn't let Leanne talk at all. It's okay. Do you want to talk a little bit more about the property evaluation program? Yeah. 
The property evaluation program was another one of Kendrick's brain child. We kind of look at it, I look at it as like the minor leagues to get you into the certification program. And it sounds like something that you, may be more beneficial to y'all. And what it does, and as Kendrick said, we're, we've just done the pilot program, so we're still working out. Being a little bit more competitive if we get more applications in. Um, but what it allows is for, it's, it doesn't get you a certification. It's not a certification process. But what you would do is you'd submit the letter, you fill out an application that would identify up to eight sites in your county. And then what our consultants would do, would do, would do a review, do a <coughs> webinar with you about the sites, sort of whittle it down to like the five best. And then once it got to that stage, they actually come out and look at the different sites. And, and then they'll come back and tell you what, their, what maybe your strategy should be, your long range strategy, your short range strategy. If you only have a limited amount of resources to put into a site, they sort of tell you what they think in their you know, opinion is the best sites to be putting your money into. And it's a very valuable program. It is, um, like I said, it, it's going to be a competitive program, so we haven't quite worked that out yet, but it's not a cost to the community. I mean, we're, the state of Tennessee is paying Austin Consultant. I, I think, did TVA do something like that? <coughs> they, I saw that there were some sites that TVA had done. TVA did. They sent out an engineer to Ed Cooper. Ed Cooper. Back in September. Okay. And visited and evaluated, I think, maybe around that number and chose around four that he said were viable, potentially viable sites. One difference in that, uh, Ed is a professional engineer, and he's approaching it really from an engineering perspective a lot of times. The process here is a little different in that ECD is contracting with a site selection firm to look at it from their perspective. It, it's, it's similar to what TVA does. TVA is uh, it, the quality is, is often heavily on the technical aspects of this, and they take a little bit more of a holistic kind of site selection consultant perspective and, and, and it's just a different, it's a little bit different field. So if you went to that countywide to start and you got to four sites and you could pick one of those to be the location? Is That's that one outcome. Okay. You know, in one county we ended up with visited five sites and we had one site that was discovered to be really their 20 year site. Five with a utility and infrastructure wouldn't be to that site for another 20 years. But they wouldn't be there even then if they didn't make incremental changes now. One site was their immediate site that was really good and maybe would be appropriate for certification. And then one site was a potential site that could be developed. So it's not always the certification would be an outcome for that. And that's one of the things that we are kind of looking at, that, that we are trying to find sites that could eventually go on to certification. And as with the certification program, how the site selectors have, have mentioned to me, being that when I went on the visits with them, it was March Madness, they said what the certification does is it skips you from those preliminary rounds in the basketball tournament to up to the Sweet 16 or the Final Four. Does it necessarily promise you a championship, but gets you up to where you're getting you know, a better chance? And, and the cost of the program for the site certification comes in if after you do the site visit and they think that you can be certified and you go on, there are costs to the community because there's cost of the borings and your phase one environmental and, you know, those sorts of things. Do you have estimations on what those costs are, or what the range may be? It varies. It varies depending on the, the size of the site. You know, generally, Phase one is five to seven, maybe ten thousand uh, dollars. Or not phase one, geotechnical studies. Phase one's three to four. Um, you know, if you have utilities to the site, then engineering line work wouldn't be needed. But if they're not to the site, then they would be needed. So, you know, topographic survey, 
depending on the acreage of the site, can vary between five and ten thousand dollars. This is where, if you really want to have viable industrial property, if a community wants to do that, they're going to have to put in some resources to make that happen. But at least if you go through this process, um, you've got somebody from the outside. It's not, it's not a governmental agency. It's somebody that does this on a day-to-day -day basis. They're out there looking for industries, the potential sites for them to locate. And so you get their expertise in saying, you know, this site was going to be kicked out and this is why. And, you, and everybody that I've spoken to that's gone through the process has said what a valuable experience it was even if they didn't get to certification. It really, as, as Kendrick said, it tells you what you didn't know. You know, you, you, you don't know what you don't know and, and that's exactly right because there's all sorts of things that may not be on your radar. Um, would y'all like to ask questions or some of the land um, owners if you had any questions? I mean, we got everybody in the room. Would that be okay with y'all? I mean, it's great. Yep. <clears throat> Larry? Oh, the question I have about your map that you showed a while ago uh, the, you had your applications and then you had your certified circles. Williamson County didn't have any. Is that a price problem? Is it? Purchase. It, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a good and a bad problem. Some of the reasons that they don't have certification is because they're so busy already landing sites <laughs> that they don't have time to go through the certification process on some of their, their things because Williamson County is doing a good job of, of recruiting and getting people to land. Yeah. So. And I will say too, I think this is just referring to industrial projects, certification, right? right? right. They don't do no. certification for office. Right, it, it's got to be, for the certification, it has to be a minimum of 20 acres. Okay, yes. that was my question. Does it have a minimum and a maximum? It, has, it doesn't have a maximum, but it has to have a minimum of 20 usable acres. And that's, and that's, um, you might have something that's 20 acres, but when, the, when they start looking at it, they might have a stream or a road or something that makes it not 20 contiguous, you know, acres. So, um, but that's another, another thing. Can, uh, Matt, can we get a copy of your presentation? Sure. Either electronically or hard copy? <clears throat> I'll get them to email it to me and I'll get copies out. All right. Okay. And... <clears throat> The, obviously, if we would start to proceed down this road with an application um, and mention that the phase one uh, could cost, you know, anywhere from three to 15, depending on how big the site is and how many issues the site has, um, and then after the, let's assume phase one would, was approved or um, seem, deemed to be appropriate or acceptable, obviously get into a full-blown phase two, um, do all of the environmental and soils and all, all those other things. What kind of ECD assistance, funding assistance is available to the community um, to offset those costs, if any? Unfortunately, there isn't anything that, because Williamson County is a tier one community, um, which means um, then there is, no there is no help that ECD gets. What ECD is giving you is, is they're paying the consultants to do the first portions of these projects. And you don't get into doing all that work unless you're pretty far down the line where they're saying, you know, we think this will make a really good site. So we don't make you, in, there is no investment of that kind of money until you've really had them come out, they've looked at it, they've done their, you know, you've submitted all the information that you have. So we try to minimize those costs to you by not having them till they're the end. So you don't need it, uh, any kind of soil borings or environmental studies done um, the with or. your... Not for the step one application. It's just enough information that uh, Austin can make a reasonable um, guess as to whether or not there's big 
issues that would eliminate the site early on. Um, the state's investment in this, like Leanne said, is the consultant's fee. And as you know, those fees are significant. And so it's not something to be entered into lightly because that is an expense to the state. Um, only if you're serious about it, but that's sort of why it's structured as it is. You step into it, you make a little bit of investment of time and effort to prepare the materials. The state makes an investment of the consultant's time and then you step through it until you have uh, reached a point that either there's a reason that it can't proceed any further or you're certified. And if you want more information, the website to go to is selecttn.com. What is it? One more time. Selecttn.com. And that will show you um, some of the things, uh, the sites that have been certified. You'll get a good view of how they're marketed and, and what they look like. And if you go to the, you know, apply now and it's got a, um, you know, your frequently asked questions are on there. And so there's lots of different things that, that you can do. It does not have to be a publicly owned site. It can be a private site if it is for sale and if it goes through the community. The community would have to, to back that. But do we know how many sites we have now in Fairview? Or? I think there's been two or three potentially. Um, Mr. Hall can answer. Um, I see his hand. <laughs> uh, I've actually identified five pieces of property, three at the 840 corridor, and I actually had four at the I-40, but the acreage doesn't, doesn't work out on two of those. Uh, I did hear a minute ago that uh, 10 acres, and now I hear 20 acres. 20 uh, acres is for the certified, certified site okay. program. We're gonna, we would try in our property evaluation to have the 20 acres also, but you have up to eight sites that you can submit. So, you know, if not all of them had 20 acres, I would go ahead and include those. Yeah. One of them is 100, I'll just... That's 20 give, minimum. Okay, 20 minimum. Uh, one of the sites has 128 acres. Another site has 164. That's at the 840. And they had the, uh, the 10 is also out there too. Uh, then at the uh, 840, we have a 33-acre site and a 25-acre site. Uh, so those sites we, we know are for sale. And uh, so basically what I need to do, I guess, is, is get everything down that they want to proceed with as far as uh, environmental and... And, well, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to throw Kendrick to the wolves here because Kendrick is now working for MTIDA, uh -huh. which serves, you know, Williamson County and serves you all. He may, and he has a very good background, he may be able to do a, you know, just a drive through on one day with you. Yes, ma'am. And be able to give you some idea of what might be good for a certified site or if you had properties that would be good, good for the property evaluation. And you could also, I'm sure, you can work with them on that information that the TV, the TV has already provided um, about how much of the total acreage is developable and what it might be suitable for. As the mayor and Frank and myself, we're good at tours. <laughs> we got that down. And, and I've been, it's, it's been a, a real blessing for me to, when you walk into a job that you, you know, that's new and then you have the person that created that this is his ch this is his baby and I told him about and now it's his, his second child that I take care of his children that he's still there to help me plus it's a real benefit for Middle Tennessee because Kendrick is now working it from your all side and helping and he doesn't like that there's a big naked spot in the middle of the state where we don't have certified sites so he's working really hard to get some more certified sites in the middle of you know in the middle of the state okay so, you know, I didn't speak much, but I'm giving him the work. Okay. <laughs> so in general, does Williamson County get a lot of businesses that move in? It's just not circled and all that, but they just come to Williamson County? or So most of the, of the projects that have happened over the last two years, I would say majority are office. Mm -hmm. um, within the, the city of Franklin, Brentwood, uh, I'm, there, I don't think there's any opportunity for manufacturing or industrial 
correct no, me. There's no wrong. land that's zoned. The last piece of land that was zoned industrial in Franklin is now a data center. And a few of the big manufacturing plants in Franklin are now churches. So there's just not that option um, here. I will say within the last couple of years, I can think of three instances where uh, someone was turned on to Middle Tennessee, then to Franklin, and said, I want to I want to have my plant in Franklin. What's the option? Well, you don't have an option. But Fairview would be great. It's driving distance. It's right there. It's You know, you have the workforce you needed. We just didn't have the point we could pe present a piece of land that was ready to go with, the, with what was needed to, to do. So I think there would be demand there, especially with 840. Finishing up, I don't. I don't think that would be the issue. I just think it's getting getting through this process that's going to be important. And I and I will tell you that when I sent out, I was in doing work on my own, and when I sent out my little email that says I've taken this new job, Matt's initial thing was back to me was congratulations. We need to. I need you to help me find land in Fairview. <laughs> so, so this is obviously a top priority with the Williamson County Chamber. Yep, it is. Yes. Uh, I'd like to let John Cherry speak for just okay. a little bit, and then I'd like for Frank to put his uh, input into because I'm, I'm sure he has some thoughts that he would like <coughs> to present to. I guess it's just maybe a stupid question, but I assume that the cost is borne by the landowner for the certification. There are two pieces there. So uh, if it's a private site, that would be an arrangement between the community and the private landowner. The state's portion of this, the state's investment, is the consult running the program, the consultant's fees. Right. There are studies, speaking for certification piece, there are studies that we've mentioned that would be expenses, mm -hmm. ex investments, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, for preparing that property. That, that would be something, I, I always approached it, that was a local decision. That was something to be worked out at the local level. If it's the chamber, the city, the private land, or, you know, that was, we, we just wanted, we, we, I viewed that as uh, among those parties to decide. Okay. Um, <clears throat> your numbers are verified, by the way. I'm, my experience in real estate is that the, the phase one environmental is about three to four, about $4,000. And um, your surveys, like you say, depends on the size of the property. So, uh, and if you have a good phase one, you don't need a phase two. You is don't that need correct? a phase two, that's right. And another point I should point out is, and it may not be the case here, but the program requires that a phase one environmental is no more than three years old. Mm -hmm. uh, geotechnical, that will, we would accept much longer, older studies right. than that. Uh, but uh, Right. Uh, another thing you mentioned too, which has kind of reminded me of, I've, I've been involved in over 500 transactions uh, and I did some commercial stuff, uh, shopping center stuff. We had a, uh, a case where a, um, an international company owned properties worldwide, they would not give up their mineral rights on this sale, represented the seller. So the compromise was for them to give up the first 500 feet which was acceptable to the buyer and with the promise that they would never do any exploration. But they wanted to make sure that if there's any drilling nearby, that they would be able to get a royalty check from that, that oil and gas that was underneath. So, which would be below that 500, you know, foot level. Yeah, just a little FYI for landowners out there in case they want to keep that. Um, my vision and I don't know who all might, may or may not share this, but I would like to see any industrial stuff to stay out where we already have industrial, which is toward the I-40 corridor. 840 is virgin territory. I'd like to see that go more, this is my wish, is you know, more, more retail, more, more residential. That would be the, you know, why we have those choices. Um, because if we do go industrial, you know, I don't want to say the word truck stop because we already have one of those, but if we go that direction over there, um, we're forever locked in at, on that interchange with that, um, with that category. And, um, you know, some people will say, well, we have to take what we can get, but no, we don't. No, we don't have to take what we can get. 
we uh, we can choose our future here. So that, that's my thoughts. But y'all can burn me at the stake if you want to, but that's how I feel about it. What did you say you wanted over there? Huh? You said you wanted what by 840? I'd like to see it go more upscale. I'd like to see it residential, retail. Um, we have a chance not to mess up that, that intersection, you know. So that's just, just my thoughts. So. Um, did y'all have any questions, just not to put you on the spot? I mean, you, I mean, the landowners get to choose, not me, but it's just, you know. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, okay. My name is Frank Walker. Uh, I'm one of the three owners, some brothers, that own about 134 acres off of the Pine Water 100 and about 100 yards away from the uh, 840 ex exit. Uh, I guess it was really right now, I know we're looking at putting, bringing utilities, really not anything to support manufacturing right now. Uh, we need a sewer, a sewer line down there. To, it's more of a rolling hills, farmland, where we're at. So I'm not, I'm not sure what our, when we do the uh, environmental survey, how that's gonna shake out, if it's gonna, if we got enough land flat enough, or if they can move some earth around and earth enough to make a, a, a big enough site. But we do have some level, level land, probably about 30, 40 acres of level, but there's a power line going through as well. TVA was, TVA was interested in looking at uh, putting a substation there. We haven't ruled that out. We just right now uh, waiting to see what, what they come back with. But uh, that's where I'm at. I, we, we do have, my brothers and I do want to sell at some point. We, that would be our retirement if we do. Because the, the land is beautiful. It's been in our, uh, our family for over 100 years. And, and we really wouldn't want to part with it, but we are, we are uh, three brothers and we don't agree on <laughs> on, on anything other than that we want to sell it at some point. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I kind of said, I think sure. um, we may have, uh, and you know more than I do, so because Joe North, our office, had, had, had some preliminary conversations with utilities. I can't remember if that property in particular was one that some of the different utilities had said that they, they do plan or they can start infrastructure out to that area if there is a company interested in the property. Do you... I can't remember on the map it is, but. I don't know about company interested, but uh, as far as the uh, utilities, actually the Nashville gas, I mean the Piedmont gas, who was eventually, uh, used to be Nashville gas, is sitting back there, Mr. David Stinson. And if the right thing comes along, they're moving there. Uh, they're going to the 840. Uh, Dixon as Water far as Authority, I think, was interested. Dixon, Water Authority of Dixon is, is will take care of the, the sewer issue and the, the wastewater and the water. And, of course, TVA that he mentioned, they're already improving the, their whole infrastructure all the way around to Spencer Mill. And I had heard, I didn't know that his property was, was the site chosen for a substation, but they have mentioned that. So as far as the utilities, I think we'll be in good shape in that direction. Um, so, uh, that being said, if there's nobody, anybody else, I'd like for Frank to, you know, yeah. put it just a couple of questions. First, um, well, on the certified uh, sites across the state, how many are in industrial parks and how many are not, or roughly? You look at that map. I don't know offhand. Uh, just what you, just what you think. Oh yeah, okay. So, all right. um, then another question I had: If we look at, um, if we look at, you know, our eight forty um, interchange, um, you know, and, and I know what John uh, Cherry is saying, but if it's done properly, we could have industrial office and retail and residential and all of that. But as far as a like an industrial park or office park. Have you seen in other communities across the state, maybe communities of our size, where they partnered with other jurisdictions to do those things? Even, you know, we might be with Hickman County or Dixon County or, you know, um, you, know you know what I'm saying? A regional park. A regional park, yeah, that's right, that's right. Have you seen uh, successful, though, of, uh, in those cases? In my experience, that doesn't happen often. 
Right. Uh, I do know of a case in East Tennessee where three counties went together and they have, uh, it's around 700, 800 acres. Yeah. Uh, there's no, it, it's a long, quite a long ways from uh, utilities and they're still in the process of developing that. It's a really long term commitment and uh, uh, that's the first one that comes to mind. Let me think about that. There may be a few others, but that's a good approach. It's just not a common approach because it takes. I understand, but you you can see where the resources we'd have available to us here in Fairview to to develop an industrial park would be very. And your scarce, you know. your geography would lend itself, I would think, to a regional kind of because you're yeah. kind of on yeah. the this you know you're on the you're very close to two other counties. You're on the edge right. of Williamson right. County. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. well situated right. for right. that. Right. Exactly. That's what. Uh, that's what it kind of occurred to, to us, and we were because we've talked, uh, you know, with people who have business interest and and other interest in in uh, Dixon County recently, and and others. So we, I just wondered if uh, even more than just the proximity to those two counties, but the proximity that 840 gives you to those two counties is right. tremendous. Uh, I have seen um, not industrial or office, but I have <laughs> seen some successful. Um, partnerships on um, commercial developments uh, where cities would enter into a pro revenue sharing agreements and attracted a bass pro shop in Leeds, Alabama and places, things like that. And um, they also had an outlet mall they worked, <coughs> worked that way with too. So it's possible for uh, jurisdictions to work together, I think, because we can all benefit from that. You know, if we had if we had an industry at 840, can, you know, and a significant number of jobs, you can imagine the uh, benefit on Hickman County and, and Dixon County too. So, you know, it's got, uh, I think it seems to me that more and more people are realizing now that it may be better to work together um, so that we can achieve what we'd like to get to without trying to do it all ourselves because doing it all ourselves is gonna be a difficult thing for us to do. That's the point. That's all I really wanted to comment on. We appreciate y'all coming. Well, do you have anything else? No, I don't have any other questions. Um, but I would like to state to this board, because it's a board that really doesn't <coughs> meet a lot. And so um, that may be something we need to change and maybe have some real conversation of, you know, um, what would this look like? Um, what could we do to move things forward? And so I would just recommend, um, you know, maybe having a meeting in the near future of just, you know, a workshop just where you're sitting down. Um, just, you know, more people come together, you know, um, the better off we can be and power storm of what, what do we want our community to look like? And those are some of the, um, questions y'all could answer you know where would the best place you know to put industrial park if we wanted to do that um, so I would suggest that y'all have those meetings and in the meantime you know we'll be moving forward with these property owners trying to see um, you know if they are ready if they want to go through the process and we'll just continue to work but I mean I think at this point um, we can, like Mr. Cherry said, we have the um, ability to control our destiny. And so um, that's one of the decisions. Uh, yes, people are going to sell their property and it may change, you know, if it's zoned. And, but, um, you know, we can sit down and take a look of, um, you know, what areas do we want to zone? Uh, is it the proper zoning? Those are things that um, we can do now. Oh, I, I have one final question and I don't think it's been brought up, but what about um, an office park slash distribution center where they have their offices there that are nice and then the manufacturing is actually not done there, but they actually have their distribution center there. Uh, was, does these type of things qualify in that range? And, and I will say one of the things that I've noticed, and you, you probably have too, actually is a few of the projects that are announcing it's an office plus manufacturing, office plus distribution. We saw one in, in Rutherford County where, you know, there's not a big office component, but it is their headquarters plus the manufacturing's right there. 
So there certainly are options for those kind of projects as well. Kendrick, you may want to comment on that. Right. I, you know, I think industry is not always what people assume yep. and have in their mind that it is. And, you know, what activity actually happens inside that building sometimes is very deceptive. You know, industry is highly sophisticated now. And it's not a dirty industry often that it was. Uh, and so, you know, there's a, it's a complicated beast that we deal with. It is. And one of the things that, you know, we, when we look about what kind of companies we try to recruit and grow in Williamson County, we look at what's a good fit for the community. So for us, it's R&D, it's healthcare, it's headquarters. I think we would do the same thing. We would want to identify options that would be a good fit. Like I started by saying, we're a resource. So if there are that, if there are those projects that have an R&D component in manufacturing, or all the projects have an office plus distribution, or are those that have manufacturing plus office, you know, we would be especially attuned to those, and we could reach out to consultants and developers that. Um, really specialize in those kind of projects. And that's one of the things that the um, consultants do when they come out and look at your property. They sort of look at what the property is and they give you their assessment of the kinds of things that would best locate on that property. Sometimes that's not all, you know, it's not going to be a Nissan or, you know, right. something like that. It's going to be, they, they might call it light, you know, light industrial or, you know, more right. of a distribution center. And they, and they will give you that opinion when they look at the site and, so that you'll know. I mean, they've done a lot of these. And, and uh, honestly, you can decide to pass on the projects too. I mean, there could be a manufacturing that, that may want to be there. You could decide this is not a good fit with our community. We're going to hold off for the next option. I mean, that's, that's certainly, you know, you're all... And if I could just add on to that too, I mean, it's been reiterated a couple times, but I think the goal here is not to prep a site for to take any project or the first project that comes along. It's so when that right project comes along, you guys have a product that's ready to go. Right. Um, and so when that right, if it is a distribution center or something, you guys have that 20 or 50 acres ready to go, ready to sell, so that project can go ahead and move and we don't have to pass on it. That's and another poor, important thing to think about there is, you know, Many times we would deal with a community-owned property, a county-owned property, an ID-owned property, but if it's a privately-owned piece of property, you don't have any control. You know, they could just sell it. So yeah, that's you know, are, are we you know, bear in mind, are you thinking of purchasing and owning and controlling the property because you wouldn't have the ability to pass on something if you didn't own it? I do know that the other towns in Tennessee are bringing in a lot of companies from out of state. That's for sure. Uh, I just went to one in Portland uh, about a week and a half ago. Yeah, it was a manufacturing facility, but you know, it looked like space age, even though they were stamping parts out. Yeah. M manufacturing isn't what we think it is yep. from days gone long, gone by. Yeah. It's very clean. Yeah. Portland has a lot of industries, very good, clean industries. And, and these are automotive. There, I mean, it's it's just a different automotive industry today. Yeah. And look at Dixon; they're throwing up plants every two minutes, doll tiles moving in there now, you know? Some, something to keep in mind too is that we work closely with the Williams County School System and this fall they're developing, they're, they're launching a, um, a mechatronics program or they'll basically over the next four years um, be training a new cohort of people trained in robotics and manufacture high-tech ma advanced manufacturing. And so that's something to think about, you know, if these sites take years to get ready and, and you know, you have a long-term strategy, you may have, you know, a <coughs> labor pool, a talented labor pool coming out in four or five years that could be really desirable to the right project, so. And that's the main complaint of most of these guys that I go visit, not enough qualified people. Yep, that's you exactly know. That's, right. That's, and that's nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, what Frank said, a minute, Frank Comber said a minute ago, I have to sort of take back just a little bit what I said because I wasn't really thinking about our neighbors uh, to the west of us because that is really a good idea, especially if it can be um, something that is a multi-mixed-use plan. And, um, you know, I've, I've, a gentleman came to my office today that lives here. It's being transferred uh, to Raleigh-Durham. And, and I said, what is Raleigh-Durham... Uh, what is their big base there? You know, we're healthcare, we're this, we're that. He said it, the pharmaceutical industry is huge there, and that is their big base, healthcare and pharmaceutical. And um, that's what he's being transferred for, he's IT. And, um, and I got to thinking about this. You know, we're known as the Detroit of the South now, and so there's got to be a lot of supporting industries 
that, that uh, supports the General Motors and the Nissans and the Volkswagens and everybody that's, that's, that's here now already. Um, and so, you know, and that corridor, that's an east-west corridor between Memphis and Knoxville, and it bypasses Nashville. So, um, you know, there's got to be something that fits in that spot. It's also uh, between where 840 connects at the, uh, at right, right there at Dixon and ends at um, almost to Lebanon. There's very few exits that have a commercial where you can get off. Your time's up. Time's up, John. So there's opportunities at that exit. That's right. There's lots of opportunities at exit seven. And so, you know, maybe there's a way for everything to fit to where it benefits not only us, but also benefits Hickman County. And if we can get the utilities, the sewer, you know, from Nixon, and maybe we've got something. Uh, the only other thing you mentioned robotics a while ago was that y'all been to Scott Fetcher, the France plant here. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, but we yes. actually have it in Fairview already, yep. so yep. we're not as behind the times oh, no. as it might no. seem. No. Yeah, so. But uh, anyway, if there's any other questions by anybody, I'll turn the meeting back over to the chairman of the. Do you have any? Do you have any schools that are are looking for properties or any college locations or anything like that? Not right now, I don't think so. But do you guys work with any anybody? That no, I don't think I don't we're working, working to, uh, right now. I mean, I, we'd love to get Nashville Software School to have a location in Williamson County, and that's something I, I want to get done. And there was one, it was, that DeVry was looking, but that they were looking to move locations. So we're not, there's none right now we're working. Nothing else, I'll turn it Mayor, back over. you had to suggested we meet more regularly and the next meant part of the agenda is to set the date for the next meeting so what what date would you like to see what kind of goal date would you as the mayor like to see for us to meet again so that we can discuss these issues um you know i would say it doesn't mean that you have to start doing it monthly i mean i, I, I would just say i would bring this to the this you know do it so maybe next month just for to get on the same page and then get a direction um, but after that it would be you know up to y'all I guess as needed you know um, but I just kind of think if y'all because this board and it could be such a important part of our community um, I think we could utilize this board and um, you know all these great minds and move forward okay mr. chairman uh, Stuart Johnson told me today that he apologized for not being able to. Mondays is a bad night for him, I think, as well as y'all well know, uh, with three boys and softball and his music program that he has. But if you could schedule another night uh, during the week, uh, he, he was very interested in making sure he's in attendance to these. So, uh, Are we as a board okay with a later meeting time? 7.30, is that okay? Would that be? I'd rather keep it at seven. seven. Okay, seven. Okay. Another day would be fine. Any suggestions of day of the week? Would you ask him for an amendment to the bylaws? Yeah, that's true. Can we just have another special meeting? Yeah, you could do it. It doesn't have to be a board. You could do a workshop. Y'all can determine just, to do. Just go with that. Yeah. Our, ask, our workshop. Could I ask, we ask for the uh, outline of the responsibilities and the uh, yeah. authority and so forth of this board? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we can have the bylaws, how we select officers, but to do something to tell us what we're going to do. Yeah. What we're supposed to do. We, we can get something to y'all and make sure. Yeah. Um, most of the board is, I mean, well, not everybody's new, but I mean, um, there's a lot of new members, so that's always good. On top of a lack of necessary meetings more than once a year to yeah. <laughs> meet and adjourn, um, which was very interesting in January um, for my first meeting. Um, special meeting, 
We'd like to do a special meeting 26th of May. You may want to call it a workshop. Tuesday workshop for the 26th of May. It's a Tuesday. That will allow uh, Commissioner Johnson or Vice Mayor still Johnson. Um, Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Johnson uh, to attend as he would like to. Um, but I will clarify that. I said workshop. It workshop. Um, you can't take a vote so maybe you should do a special meeting if y'all want to vote on something um, but if you want to just sit down around the table and um, plan and just have those discussions then you know Open the discussions I'm leave it for the to y'all. You're good without the ability to make any moves um, so let's do a workshop on the 26th it's a Tuesday the 26th of May next month um, so everyone so moved. Second. Second. All four? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, on to the next, which is to adjourn. I have a motion. I have a motion. Second. 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 So moved. Second. 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 Second.